Today we are going to talk about a very complex uh, neurovascular disease which is called a keratocavernous fistula. Keratocavernous fistula is basically abnormal connection between artery and the vein. And here the vein is cavernous sinus. So we are talking about communication of those arteries which are going through the cavernous sinus that can open up as a fistula into the cavernous sinus, hence raising the pressure of cavernous sinus and uh, that is going to cause the problem. So basically once the cavernous sinus pressure goes off because of abnormal fistulous communication between the carotid and the cavernous, then the veins that are draining into the cavernous sinus will be under tremendous pressure. Hence there will be abnormal increase in pressure in the orbit on the venous side basically. So the venous drainage from the orbit is compromised Hence, we have these patients presenting to us with uh, exophthalmos and uh, you know redness of the eye and diminishing vision and headache. Pause. Yes. The keratinocavernous uh, fistula that we are talking about today can be classified in a different different ways. The first thing, uh, the kind of classification uh, that is existing, is a direct CCF or indirect CCF. Direct keratinocavernous fistula is a fistula which where the carotid has directly opened into the cavernous sinus. That can happen because of a trauma of the skull base. Indirect fistula can happen from slowly feeding exocarotid artery, uh, the meningeal branches, which can you know, give rise to a slowly progressing carotid cavernous fistula, and it could be bilateral also. The other type of classification which is most commonly used nowadays are the type A, B, C, and D. Basically, a type A fistula is a carotid artery which has directly opened into the cavernous sinus and transmitting the pressure dramatically into the cavernous sinus, leading to exothalmus and the other symptoms that are like a headache, like a carnosis and all that. Whereas, the type B is just a dural branch of the, the carotid which is opening up into the cavernous sinus and presentation will be a little less dramatic compared to the type A. Type C is basically the external carotid artery which might have opened the meningeal branch into the cavernous sinus. It's a slowly progressing carotid cavernous fistula. And type B is a combination of either of them. So these are the classification that is existing for the carotid arteries or we can approach to the vein or we can directly approach from the orbital uh, space. And uh, most commonly the type A uh, carotid cavernous fistula that we see we go in a transarterial fashion and we get inside the carotid artery and into the fistula and then do a coil embolization or embolization with the detachable balloons. Whereas uh, the type of D or type C fistula where the external carotid artery through its meningeal branch, numerous meningeal branches, uh, getting inside the cavernous sinus and uh, those fistulas are mostly treated by a transvenous approach because we can go into the cavernous sinus and treat all the fistula at one go. So that uh, is a kind of embolization that we are doing for the indirect fistulas. And previously we used to do only coil for transvenous occlusion of uh, carotid cavernous fistula, but nowadays we are adding it up with uh, liquid embolics like onyx, uh, squid, or uh, the fill that is available to us, and that is improving the results far better. And the number of coil that is used to treat this fistula has come down drastically. So these are the kind of treatment that is available today for keratinocavernous fistula. Today we have a middle-aged uh, lady who is uh, in his uh, in her fifties, and she is presenting to us with a slow progressive echinosis, the you know uh, the diplopia and uh, headache and uh, exothalmus, the headache. So we are going to treat this patient uh, who is presenting to us and the angiogram uh, is demonstrating there is an indirect fistula. The fistula is filling from both the external carotid artery and we are going to treat this by transvenous occlusion of the carotid cavernous fistula with coils and liquid embolic materials. Angiogram of common carotid artery on either side 
selective injection of the ICA and selective injection of the ECA on either side were performed. Now we are doing uh, the selective ECA angiogram on the left side where we are able to see this this is basically the external carotid artery injection and you can see a lot of meningeal branches which is just going across and opacifying the thing very early opacifying the carotid the cavernous sinus very early and increasing the pressure of the cavernous sinus tremendously hence the super ophthalmic vein on the right side is filling early and in a reverse fashion so that is what is increasing the venous pressure on the right orbit and the patient is presenting to us with this carotidocarola of the right sides. So this is basically the angiogram of the right external carotid artery and we can see that there is an opacification of the cavernous sinus and the superior ophthalmic vein. And we must do an IC angiogram also and we can see a very early blast uh, of the cavernous sinus here but that doesn't look significant but uh, this is what it looks like it's a uh, region of the cavernous sinus but we don't see early feeling of the cavernous uh, of the so I have put a put a guiding over here and then I am putting my micro catheter and uh, once we go I'm just trying to navigate up here so there is some challenge uh, doing this uh, particular navigations because uh, to get into the right uh, veins it's not so easy all the time yes so I'm able to progress uh, things better and yes so now I am just moving up oh that's good so I have moved up all the way into the cavernous sinus and this is the selective injection to confirm our position in the cavernous sinus and then we can see the reflux into the superophthalmic vein so absolutely fantastic position so I'm going to go ahead with coiling up for this uh, cavernous sinus now so this looks beautiful uh, just this is the right jugular vein and this is the inferior petrosal sinus and this is a cavernous sinus this is a multiple fistulous communication and uh, from the meningeal branch of the left, left external carotid artery and uh, uh, my catheter is selectively into the external carotid artery and uh, the coiling is going perfect if I just should go ahead and occlude the cavernous sinus as much as possible so that looks uh, slowing off the carotidocavernous fistula we will progressively coil and uh, see how things go so here I am deciding to move on to my liquid embolic agents and I am using onyx here and uh, a good that I have an Exelon over there which is, which is a DMSO compatible microcatheter so I don't have to change my microcatheter I can just continue injection from the same microcatheter and try to occlude as much as possible so we can see this uh, multiple meningeal feeders still feeding even with a good amount of coil that I put in the cavernous sinus. So if you look at these uh, feeders, this, uh, they certainly need to be embolized otherwise uh, the treatment is not going to go and I would love to take the foot of this uh, superophthalmic vein also. So you can see it's very dilated. So I will move on to liquid embolics and then, then we will see. Well, we can see here I could inject a significant amount of uh, liquid embolic the onyx and uh, it looks quite beautiful over here and if you look at a, a digital subtraction angiogram of the left external carotid artery you can see the fistula has slowed down significantly there is very minimal flow into the fistula and uh, majority of the fistula is gone and the rest is slowed down a lot but you still see a little bit so we will just wait and watch how things move from here so we have uh, waited a couple of minutes now we do a check angio the fistula is completely occluded and that looks uh, absolutely fantastic so we can see here very clearly that uh, same external carotid injection the common carotid injection here is not filling the fistula at all 
and we can see the mass of coil and uh, the liquid embolics over here and uh, that looks fantastic and we still have the micro catheter which we just need to take it out and uh, we do a final angiogram and uh, uh, we see how things uh, looks like now we can see the EC angiogram which looks pretty clean and there is uh, no filling of the cavernous sinus whatever so the left EC angiogram the final angiogram of the left ECA which is showing the cavernous sinus is not filling at all and we are quite happy with the embolization procedure here we have completely embolized uh, this keratico cavernous uh, fistula over here and this is our ICA angiogram of the left side and there is no filling if you do a proximal occlusion in a kind of fistula then you expect that the fistula starts filling from somewhere else so it's always a good idea to check both the carotids and both the uh, external and internal carotid on either side to basically confirm that we have completely embolized uh, the fistulas. And this is my right ECA angiogram which is demonstrating the complete occlusion of the carotid or cavernous fistula with no sign of uh, filling of the cavernous or superior ophthalmic vein. And this is our right IC angiogram, which is uh, demonstrating there is a no sign of opacification of the fistula. So this is a complete cure of this keratico cavernous fistula in this uh, middle-aged lady who came to us and we have embolized transvenous with coil and onyx going from the right jugular to infrapetrosal sinus to cavernous sinus and occluding the fistula in its entirety. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching.